right. Good evening, everyone. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our program of studies tonight. My name is Paul Brannigan. and I'm the principal here at the high school, and we welcome you to this important evening because this night allows you to learn about the course of study and the programs that the high school has to offer because we know that just over the last couple of days that in all, for all students of grades 8 through 11, they received all of their information to begin their course selections for next year. And we're really committed to make sure that our, our schedules and our students have, are in the driver's seat of their schedule. And some may question that a little bit and say, well, why would you do it that way? And I'll tell you the philosophy, that at the high school level, one of the main goals for us is to ensure that every student empowers themselves to be their own learner. And sometimes the fact that we, we have found that when a teacher gives a recommendation up front, that sometimes they're not ready to challenge themselves potentially. And they may be looking to say, you know what, I really love the content and I love that subject and I really think I could do it. But because Mrs. So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so said, I think you belong in this level, they, it's where they end up staying. So we changed it kind of in our way of ensuring the fact that the student voice and your voice as families have a, a large say in that. So we flipped it around. So what we do is, is that your student will choose their select, select their classes. Um, our guidance counselors spent the, a day down in, at the Nichols Middle School meeting with all of the eighth graders who they would be serving as their, guide, as their guidance counselor through their four years up here. And the idea of it is, is to help them navigate really the courses they want to take and then working with you to make those selections. Once we generate all of those selection sheets, it goes all back to the teachers, and they then have their opportunity to go through those lists and say, here are all the students who identified this course at this level. And then that's where we do that vetting process to make sure the fact that every student is accounted for and it's correct, because sometimes you may choose a course that you didn't need to select or vice versa. And it's important for us that we keep vetting the schedule over and over and over again, that by June, um, the schedule is in good form and the courses that your child will be taking are in good order. So um, what you're doing over the next couple of days and, and the next week really, is really the first stage of many, many pieces of this puzzle of solidifying a schedule. So please know the fact that you're making choices. No, you're not, you're not went to that choice uh, in completion, that there's an opportunity to change it, to have conversation. And tonight begins that process. And I'm so grateful for the team of colleagues that are here tonight from our entire guidance, uh, guidance counseling staff to all of our department leaders um, who are here to be able to share with you a little bit about their content area, but also to be able to answer questions. And when we're done with this process tonight, this presentation, that outside in the lobby, there are tables set up for every content area. So say you're sitting here and you're thinking, you know, you really want to talk to the math department head about math courses, and you may be interested in Project Lead the Way, and you want to learn a little bit about that a little bit in more depth that the department leader is going to be there for you to help you. The guidance staff is going to be set up in two spaces, one at a table to ask for any general questions. The other guidance counselors will be in our computer lab, which is right over here, that if you wanted to go in and actually begin the scheduling process, you can do that. Our um, data specialist for the district, um, Katie Godine, is going to be here as well, who's going to be able to help do some navigation for you in Aspen if you needed some more of the technical stuff if you needed some of that support as well. So our hope is, is that tonight will be a night for you to ask questions and to learn and to be able to walk out the door feeling um, ready that you can make selections or if you have made your selections already, that you feel confident in those selections as well. I do want to just share with you just a quick overview, if I may, of some of the real cool things that I think we have going on here at the high school. And this is just one of many. Um, our AP capstone program, which is for the eighth grade students that are here, rising ninth graders, this would be something for you to think about in grade 10. That in the 10th grade year, that the advanced placement program opens up to all of our students. And the AP capstone program is one of the first ones that are offered. It's a two-year program between two courses. In grade 10, it's AP Seminar. In grade 11, it's the Advanced Placement Research class. They're done in tandem together because in that program, you can actually earn an AP certificate. And then if you actually qualify on four more AP courses and get a qualifying score on the Advanced Placement exam, you can actually earn a second diploma. And what the AP capstone is, is a mini doctoral project where students find something they're passionate about and they begin an investigation and exploration of what that is. So it's, um, it's a pretty innovative program that um, schools are more and more of them are becoming part of the AP capstone experience. 
and we're so grateful that Middle Bar was one of the first ones in. Um, our early college and dual enrollment, Tammy Miller is here. You'll have an opportunity to meet her and to just learn a little bit about our processes that we do and the opportunities. One of the greatest things the town of Middle Bar ever did was bring a college to town. Um, because when Massasoit came into Middle Bar, it allowed for us to pair up our students with a college experience. We know that so many of our kids, they know they're college bound, they know where they want to go, they have their entire life mapped out. But we also know we have many students that giving them a taste of what college could be and giving them the opportunities to engage in Massasoit to earn credits that are, that are free for them, it's credits they're taking with them into Massasoit or beyond. And I'll let Tammy share about some of those. One of the most powerful ones we have is the Jim Braga Pathway to Business that our students can start in grade 10 and that they can take a journey of business courses and management courses and they can matriculate up to 12 credits into either Massasoit or into a college of their choice as they're applying. And um, we're so grateful to the Braga family for their support of that in Massasoit. The Project Lead the Way, which we know that we have been so grateful of our first year in the process. And I know that Kirk Rensha, our science department head, will share a lot about that. We have an engineering pathway and a biomedical pathway, and we're soon, we're hoping, we'll have a computer science pathway as well. We're one of only four high schools in the entire state of Massachusetts that offers a Russian program. Um, we have a four-year program, um, which is in, it's an incredible, incredible experience for those students who take Russian. And I know that Mr. Kenny, our foreign language department chair, will share a little bit about that. School to career internships. Um, when your student gets up to grade 12, we really find and help them find what they're passionate about. And then Mrs. Miller does the incredible work of really pairing where students are going to be for an internship and career placement. So we have almost every one of our members of our senior class engaged in the internship experience where they spend blocks of the day um, out in the community and working in businesses and in schools and in the courthouse, fire signs and so on. And then never mind all the clubs and athletic programs we have here as well. So as much as you're making selections tonight um, and thinking about the courses you want to take, one of the things you're going to hear from us over and over again is about taking academic risks. And really for you is to identify, well, what kind of risks do you want to take? Because we want students to challenge themselves. And it may be just the one course that they're going to challenge themselves in and say, maybe that honors course would be a great course for you to take. And maybe not have to think about doing all of their courses in honors. But then that one course becomes maybe two courses, and those two courses maybe become an advanced placement course or a higher level elective program that you may want to take. So really for us, our goal is to help create a pathway for your child to find success and ultimately to graduate with success and excellence as well. So with that being said, I want to introduce a very dynamic group in our school, our guidance department, who's going to take you through some of the nuances, and then we'll go into the content areas to give a little bird's eye view of what the content areas are. So without further ado, introducing Ash Barron, Mrs. Byrne, um, Mrs. Miller, and Mr. Goldman. Welcome everybody. So we're the guidance department. Um, my name is Ash Barron. Uh, we divide our caseload alphabetically. So we each have 9 through 12 and then we have alphabetical order. So I have everyone with the last names F through M. I'm not going to order the alphabet. <laughs> I'm Mr. Goldman um, and um, I have the end of the alphabet. I have N through Z. Hi, I'm Amy Byrne, and I have the beginning of the alphabet, um, last names A through E. Hello, I'm Tammy Miller, and I actually run the senior internship program and the early college dual enrollment as well as the James Braga program. So Mr. Goldman is going to represent our department and go through the opening of our evening, and he'll go over all these special slides with you now. Oh, well, thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, any eighth grade parents here? Mostly eighth grade parents. Thank you for coming. Just in case you didn't know, we did go over to the middle school last week and we met with all of the eighth graders as long as they were in school that day. Uh, and we gave them a packet of information, which was an abbreviated program of studies that only listed the courses and the descriptions of the courses that they are eligible to take going into ninth grade. Uh, we figured you didn't want to be bogged down with all the details. 
They just want to kind of get to the stuff that you need to be uh, worrying about at this point. If you want to see what else we offer, certainly go online to the, our website and you can see the full program of studies, which is a very, very large document. Uh, you can see what we offer as they move along throughout the four years here at the high school. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about graduation requirements. So in order to get a high school diploma from Middlebar High School, you need to earn a total of 136 credits. Seems like a lot. Um, you can earn up to 40 credits a year, so 160 max. So, there, uh, so 136 is reasonable when you look at it that way. All the students need to pass the following requirements on the screen here. Four years of English, three years of math. For a high school diploma, if you're looking to go to a four-year college, you do need a fourth year of math. And they, it has to be every single year. You can't say, I'll double up one year. You have to have it your senior year also. This is uh, three lab sciences, three social sciences slash history, world history two is the freshman course, US one, US two. Foreign language, two years of the same language. And physical fitness, uh, physical education, um, they, you need to take one quarter of phys ed every year. Uh, fine arts, you can take, you need a total of five credits in fine arts. Um, so you can take either a five credit elective or a two, or two, two and a half credit elective courses. Same thing with technology, either five credit or two, two and a halves. And then that leaves the students with 41 credits of their choosing. So once you get through your freshman and your sophomore year, you can see how the schedule really starts to open up. So if you look at this picture up here on the screen right now, you can see the freshman year in the upper left-hand corner. The yellow boxes are spaces available for elective courses. So you can see there's not a lot. There's a lot of requirements that the students need to kind of go through early on. Sophomore year, similar. Junior year, it definitely opens up. And then the senior year, if you've uh, taken care of all the business that you need to the first two years, the first three years, uh, really the only required courses left are a fourth year of English fourth year of math and that quarter of phys ed. So most of it is uh, opened up to elective courses. <clears throat> we have three different levels here at the high school. We have college preparatory courses, we have honors courses, and we have advanced placement courses. College preparatory is literally what the words say, prepares you for college. We do not offer any non-college preparatory courses here at the high school. So don't look at it as, well, that's as low as you can get. I'm not going to get into, uh, into college with those courses. You can get into a competitive four-year college if you take all college preparatory courses. It doesn't mean you don't challenge yourself, but if that's at the level that you are at academically, there's nothing wrong with college preparatory courses. Honors are advanced level. They move at a much faster pace. There's less repetition. Um, the students, there's an expectation that the students can follow along and keep up. The teachers will stop and answer questions, but they are going to move along um, because there's a the, the certain amount of curriculum they do need to cover in the course of the year. Advanced placement courses are college level courses. Very, very rigorous, very little reputa reputa uh, repetition. You, uh, there'll be summer reading, a lot of summer reading that goes along with it, and some summer work. Um, there, was a, uh, there was a very high level of expectation because after you take the AP exam at the end of the year, you can possibly earn anywhere from three to six college credits, um, which is a huge, huge savings. Um, so there's a, there's a very high expectation as far as the, uh, the, the advanced placement. These are the AP offerings that we have here at the school. The department heads are going to talk a little bit more about those in more specific fashion. Um, computer science is new next year. Early college dual enrollment. Early college and dual enrollment is a um, is a an agreement between the Board of Regents and uh, for the state schools and the uh, local high schools. So we have dual enrollment agreements with the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth, Bridgewater State, and Massasoit. Our connection with Massasoit is a very strong one because we do uh, dual enrollment courses 
in our schedule. We actually bus the students over to Massasoit to the Middleborough campus during the school day and they take classes over there and then they come back here. Um, the other schools, Mass Maritime in uh, Bridgewater and UMass Dartmouth, you, the student would be responsible for driving there and um, at Bridgewater and Mass Maritime there is a discount. Um, you would have to pay for those courses at a discounted rate. Um, I don't know if UMass Dartmouth does that, though. I think you made the pay full price of UMass Dartmouth. Mrs. Miller, you want to talk about this? So the James Braga Pathway to Business program is a program available to sophomores, juniors, and seniors. It's a four-course sequence. Um, and there, there is no prerequisites for the courses, so you can take them in a random order. So if a student has room in their schedule sophomore year for intro to business, for example, and then they're not able to take, you know, another course until senior year, and it happens to be, you know, um, in principles of marketing, that's fine. If a student is able to get all four courses throughout their high school career, um, they would be earning 12 college credits free of charge. We do bus, as Mr. Goldman mentioned, we do bus students to Massasoit at Middleborough during the regular school day, um, and then they're bused back to continue along with their regular academic day for completely free of charge through you know, a generous grant from the Braga family and contributions. Um, students you know, should be in good academic standing. It is a college course and they're receiving both college and high school credit provided that they earn a 74 or higher. A couple of, um, another unique opportunity is the senior internship program. So high school seniors, with the exception of the early childhood education program that is open to juniors, they are allowed to spend half their day senior year for either semester one or semester two to explore a career field they're interested in. Some of the popular programs are the fire science program. The fire science program is a competitive program where students apply second semester junior year. They do interview with the fire department um, and it's based on, selection is based on seriousness of purpose, their academic standing, their social standing within the building and it's a phenomenal program if you've known Anyone who's gone through it, if you've seen, you know, pictures on Facebook, it's, it's amazing. They, they mimic the Massachusetts Fire Academy. So anyone that's considering a career in emergency response, I mean, it's a great opportunity. As well as the criminal justice program where the police station does take, take interns. Students are allowed to participate in ride-alongs. They work dispatch, they're stationed at the courthouse, and they really get a full experience within the field of criminal justice. We have opportunities in health sciences, in nursing, physical therapy, at Toby Hospital, at um, Cape Way Physical Therapy, Plymouth Bay, orthopedics, you know, uh, a plethora of opportunities. As well as the early childhood education program, which that is also, as Mr. Goldman mentioned, in conjunction with Massasoit. So students are allowed to take um, either child development or guidance of the young child where they're again they take the course at Massasoit for college credit and then they participate in a practicum experience at either the Memorial or Early Childhood Center or at a local daycare and once they complete those internship hours and the coursework they're qualified to get the teacher certification so another great opportunity um, we also have a lot of internship opportunities within the trades, and we're always looking to design a specific opportunity based on a student's interests and, and needs. I was just talking to one of my seniors this morning who was interning over at Toby Hospital, and she was telling me that she experienced a uh, hernia procedure today, and last week actually experienced a C-section. So this is like real life stuff that they're actually able to uh, observe and, and uh, be involved with. Our program of studies. All the courses and course descriptions are located in the program of studies. Please read it over. Please don't just pick courses because the deadline is approaching. Um, it's important that you read, make sure that what you're signing up for is what you like and what you want, especially the level of it, um, whether it's college prep or honors or EP. Um, and it is posted on our homepage. 
So you can go right there and click right on it. It's also, when you get onto Aspen, I believe there's a link right on the Aspen page. Um, it was the Program of Studies in Blue. You just click on that and the descriptions will be right there. Um, so as you're picking your courses. Uh, we started meeting with all of the high school students that are coming back next year. Um, today, we're going into the gym classes and we're pulling them out for a few minutes and going over, making sure they're uh, picking the right courses um, and um, got enough credits and the right courses as far as uh, hitting the graduation requirements. So we hope to get half of the school completed this week and then once we change semesters, uh, the following week after that, we will be with the rest of the school and everyone will have had some contact with their guidance counselor. Certainly, if you have questions, uh, send emails. I know I've already gotten inundated with a whole bunch of emails. Um, eighth grade parents, if you could try to forward your emails to the eighth grade counselors uh, right now, there'll be a point where we do transfer over and they become ours, um, but it's just... There's a lot going on here at the high school, so we don't want you to have to wait. We want you to get answers really quick. If they're not sure about something, they will let up the last us and we'll let them know, but um, try to um, send your, your, message, your uh, concerns over there first. Thank you, Steve. One thing I, I want to make sure that um, is the dual enrollment program that if your child is, when they get into that senior year in particular, with the partnerships with Bridgewater and Mass Maritime and UMass Dartmouth, that the guidance staff that will work with them to navigate how to take that course. Um, so for example, that we, sometimes a student will take it as an extra course in their schedule, so they'll have the full day and they may take a course at night. And for students who do that, they, ch they own their grade, meaning they can choose whether or not they want to add it to a transcript. If we also then can take dual enrollment, and we can add it to the day, so they have a release of a block in their day. But in those cases, they may have three classes and take a night class somewhere at, say, Bridgewater or something. But in those cases, the class, the course has to go on their transcripts. So it does have to, because it has to show a full schedule. So when you get to that senior year, that it really does become a world of opportunities. And I just want to make sure that was clarified about that dual enrollment piece, that if a student really wants to go and explore looking at a class at Mass Maritime and so on, that we help you navigate that. I wanted to share with you a couple of things about the English department. Mrs. McLeod, who's the department chair, unfortunately in the 11th hour was not able to be here tonight. Um, so I told her that I would make sure that I shared some of the pieces with to her. What you see in the program of studies, if you were to go in, in all the content areas, you see really just a graphic that gives you pathways. So on the left-hand side, it will tell you the core courses that you need to take. So in the ninth grade, it's English 9, English 10. You'll notice in grade 11 where the advanced placement courses become an opportunity in the English department that you can either take the English 11 course at the Honors of College Preparatory level or you could go into either advanced placement literature or advanced placement language and composition. And then also in grade 11, you'll notice the fact that this is an array of courses. We've totally revamped our senior English and we really modeled what would happen in a college setting. So instead of just taking senior English, we created different courses that students really would be interested and taking. So for example, we do literature and psychology, we do literature and film, sports writing and literature, and those students can choose one of those pathways. And we have other courses that we've done, but these are the three most popular ones that our seniors will gravitate to. Also on top of that, you'll see the advanced placements that are there as well. So during the pathway of the core content, the core uh, courses they need, you'll notice on the left-hand side of the pathway charts in all the content areas. Math is a little bit different. I know Mrs. Miles will talk to that. On the elective side, these are the courses your child can choose at any point in their journey. So Mr. Goldman had shared out just a little while ago of what those four schedules would look like in four years. You saw the yellow shading as every year becomes more and more. One of the things that your child will do, especially for the eighth grade families that are here, is there will be some other courses you need to take that are beyond your math, your English, your science, your history, and so on. And that some of the courses you'll see here from journalism to mythology, gender studies, Gothic literature, literature and diversity, all of those courses become open to any student grades nine through 12. So I wanna make sure as you're looking at those electives, those are the courses that would be offered to a ninth grader. And then obviously, as you see, moving down through the elective program in English. You'll notice just the um, MCAS, this is a high stakes arena up here. So you know the fact that your child needs to be able to pass the MCAS test in math, in English, and in biology. 
This is the first year at the high school we're going to online assessment. I know in the low, in the middle school for all of our eighth graders, you're somewhat used to doing the online assessment test so already, or at least you've been exposed to it. We're going to do it this year in English and in math, and in next year, your freshman year, it will be done in biology as well. So we're doing a lot of work up here, prepping students to understand how to navigate an online assessment, but also helping the teachers navigate that as well, because that's a culture shift for the adults as well. Um, you'll just see actually how the, the exam is engaged um, in really just the one-to-one -one device and we're, um, we've adopted a program here in all of the core content areas called Edge Elastic. And what that helps us do is it, it's um, one-stop shopping for us in terms of assessment and getting data back immediately on the students, but it also is helping them be able to navigate an online test, which is all part of that skill of the clicking and the dragging and the highlighting of all the things they need to be learning how to do. And to assume they know how to do that is really ear place. So we really make sure the fact that we are doing that work with them, and I know that some of the department heads will share that. Just really some of the common assessments that in the areas of the school, that there's common assessments that are done throughout all of the content areas, and in English, these are the skills that they really look at. So in the ninth grade, the common assessments, these are the skills that we need to make sure that our students are doing in all of the ninth grade of looking at literary analysis and narrative and physicists, and then you'll see it engage as we move further into the, into the years of grade 10, in grade 11, in grade 12. So in every year in English, we keep building upon the skills that they're learning and how to transfer them from grades 9 to grade 10 to grade 11 to grade 12. One of the key goals at the high school in all of the areas is how do we get kids to transfer what they know? Because if we can teach them certain skills, like how to analyze something, and they can master the skill and then you apply content to that, um, we know the fact that if they can master the skill, the, the content will come with it as well. Um, Mrs. McLeod, we have a sign-up sheet out in the lobby, so if you had some real unique questions about ELA and courses and, and experiences, I want you to kind of just put your name in an email address or a phone number, and Mrs. McLeod will be in touch with you to ask those questions. So if there's an area tonight that you wanted to do a little bit deeper of a, of a conversation, I'd like to turn it over to our Fine Arts Department Chair, and she has the good work of working with the Theater Department, the Music Department, as well as the Visual Arts. So Mrs. Duggan. folks, my name is Danny Duggan and I am the Fine Arts <laughs> Department Chair. So we have um, three different disciplines in Fine Arts, Visual Arts, Music, and Theater. Um, you do have to do five credits for graduation. We have a lot of students that stay with us all four years. Okay. So I'll just talk a little bit about some of the offerings that we have. In the Visual Art, First and foremost, if you are interested in doing visual art, particularly studio art, and you're thinking maybe you want to be Studio 2, Studio 3, or AP, then you really should take Art Foundations in your freshman year, okay? Because it is the entry-level course for going into any of the studio arts. Um, the AP Studio Art is quite rigorous. It changed a little bit this year, but they do roughly about 25 pieces of work um, with written analysis, which is quite a massive amount of work. Um, we also have in the electives three different pathways. So you can stay with the studio and the foundation and go into painting, you can go into portraiture if you want, or you can go into more of like pop art. We have comic book, we have um, graffiti, illustration, uh, calligraphy, or we have digital, so digital imaging, graphic design as well. So those are the three art. Um, we are working on doing an Arts National Honor Society, and we also have an after-school art club as well. In music, so in music we have um, three different performance groups, band, orchestra, concert choir, as well as Sage Singers, which is kind of the entry level into concert choir. When you look at the pathways, it says the core. The core is the theory courses. So this is where students are learning how to um, write music, read music, analyze it. Um, we have a wonderful Mac lab in the um, music department where they have all kinds of like garage band and composition program um, that they work on. In terms of the performances, there's band, and concert choir and orchestra, you can either go college prep or you can go honors. 
all of the students are in the same class. It's just if you're at the honors level, then you will have some more extra work that you have to do in terms of working on music or some sort of research into it to get that extra honors credit. We also have um, electives. If you're just like, I just want to get my 2.5 credits, you can do American Pop. We have Music, History, and Literature, um, which will give you the 2.5 credits. And then theater. Um, I'm the theater teacher in the building. And um, the art of theater is the entry level um, to go into any of the other courses. So you want to take that one first. And then um, there's a variety of things. Theater one, theater two, theater three is the main core pathway, which builds, builds, builds. By the time we get into theater three, we're really working on performance strategies. That pathway follows theater history as well. So art of theater is the ancients and the classics. Once you get into theater one, then we're into modernism and realism, which is around the turn of the century. Theater two is what's called anti-realistic, which would be kind of like the 60s and the 70s, revolutionary kind of theater. And theater three is um, contemporary, what's being performed today. In terms of the electives as well, Shakespeare is a non-performance course. If you're interested in theater but you don't want to get up, we kind of unpack Shakespeare's plays, put them in a contemporary kind of setting. There's also a public speaking class, which most people don't want to take, but it's a really good class to take. Um, probably the one that has the most transferable skills for you. Um, and then we also have play production, which is building all of the set pieces. And um, I just started a playwriting class, which so far is going really well. We have lots of co-curricular activities in the fine arts program. Speech and theater is the performance program after school. We do four main shows, as well as five coffee houses, trips into Boston, um, all kinds of events after school. There is an art club after school as well. And um, obviously, in terms of the music, they have the marching band, um, which goes to the football games, the parades, concert choir, does a lot of events outside of the building as well. Um, so there's a lot of things to do after school. You don't have to be in any of the fine arts classes to do the after school activities, but oftentimes they kind of go hand in hand. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Duncan. I'd like to introduce Mr. Kinney, who is the department chair for the foreign language. Do you mind being in charge of that? I'm useless with that thing. Uh, is anyone in need of a seventh inning stretch? You've been great. Uh, parents, this is a little bit of what an 86 minute block feels like, so settle in. Uh, you've all had your long work days. I appreciate greatly. Uh, awesome audience, so thank you. Um, in the foreign language department, uh, just like in the other course areas that you'll be hearing about and that you've already heard about, uh, we have a lot of really wonderful personalized ways to try to make education come alive for your students, uh, give you an opportunity or give them an opportunity to explore whether this is something they would want to pursue at a, a greater level, at a deeper level, and uh, perhaps into their college years or uh, directly into career. Uh, foreign language is a, a really extremely valuable skill the world over, whether your child's going to enter the military, where the Russian course offerings that we offer are deemed a critical language here by the United States, whether they plan on going right into uh, a career field, whether it's going to be uh, working in a hospital, working in a police department, working anywhere, having some foreign language skills like Spanish might be really valuable in the New England area. And then uh, we also offer uh, French, which has been uh, not only a popular language here in town historically, but it's spoken uh, in countries throughout the world. So uh, we have an opportunity for your student to acquire a foreign language uh, beginning at that beginner level as unlike all the other content areas where they've studied history or social studies to some extent uh, throughout their years in school, they've studied science and mathematics in a way. This is a whole new foray for your students. So I find, um, I love working with freshmen, I love working with those transitional students, because this is the first time that they get to work in acquiring a second language, most of us. Um, so it is a very, very neat thing. You'll find here that we have uh, three different languages, as I've already referenced, uh, Russian, Spanish, and French. All of them are offered for grades 9 through grades 12 with uh, one course of study scheduled for each year. And your student will be required to take a minimum of two years of foreign language. So they'll take a level 1 and a level 2. The requirement does imply that they take two consecutive years of study. So they take Spanish 1, Spanish 2, or French 1 and French 2, and not take one language and then switch to another after one semester. We do have a lot of students that enjoy the beginner levels and they'll get that communicative skill in Spanish. And then maybe as a junior, they'll try out French and as a senior, they'll try out Russian. Uh, over the years, we've had several students that have gone through and done two, three, or four years of study of all languages. And by the time they graduate, they're members of our honor societies in all three languages, which is a pretty neat thing. 
Uh, that said, in addition to the two years of foreign language requirement that your child will have, they'll also have an opportunity to engage in some elective classes where we hope to be expanding that uh, during the duration of your child's studies here at MHS. Uh, however, we have unleveled electives that are available for our freshmen in cultural perspectives and Spanish in the workforce, as well as uh, additional uh, elective courses that they can take if they have a bit of a Spanish background and that we offer uh, Spanish for communication as well for students that have that level one, level two Spanish under their belt but maybe are more interested in the speaking ability because they want to utilize it in the workforce or in the real world and less interested in the academic study of a foreign language like they might see in level three or level four language. Next, there we go. <clears throat> Your student will have the opportunity, regardless of what language they study, to uh, continue for all four years. And if they do continue into their third year and they achieve honor marks in their third year of foreign language, they'll have an opportunity to be invited and then complete an uh, application form to be part of a foreign language honor society. Our three languages each have a chapter with a national charter, so regardless of the avenue that you feel is best for your child or students you feel is best for you, you'll have a chance to uh, be part of a national organization of scholars in that language of study. Mr. Matthew Osgood. Thank you, Mr. Kinney. And one thing that you'll notice that even in English that, and I know Mrs. Duggan had referenced it in the arts as well, that there is a honor society, a national honor society for all of our content areas. So there is opportunity, and especially in grade 12, to be celebrated and to have that recognition that you have achieved um, the status of being in those honor societies. So without further ado, Mr. Osgood from the History Department. Thank you, Mr. Bernigan, for the introduction. Mr. Kinney, that's a difficult uh, act to follow. Thank you, though. Um, so again, my name is Mr. Osgood. I'm the History and Social Sciences uh, Department Chair. I stress that sciences portion because we just had a, uh, a change with a new adoption of the 2018 History and Social Science Framework. Uh, so again, um, and I'll point this out in just a second, that there will be um, many changes, I, I believe, as your student or students progress through their four years here at MHS. If you could hold on, Mr. There we go. Okay, so uh, for ninth grade, all students complete World History II as a graduation requirement. From there, as Mr. Goldman pointed out, uh, beginning in grades 10, 11, and on into 12, many opportunities open uh, for both AP and elective offerings. The department, I'm not certain, but I believe we may offer the most electives within the school. We offer nine elective courses, many of which are two and a half credits, um, and some others are five. Uh, so a two and a half credit course would typically run 45 days, so one quarter in length, and a 90 day full semester course would be five credits. Mr. Berenike, if you could change that for me. Thank you. So our three year graduation requirement here at within our history and social science courses requires your student in ninth grade, they must complete World History II at a CP or honors level course. Uh, both courses, uh, whether it's CP or honors level, they both prepare your student uh, very much so for their you know, sophomore, junior, senior year experience, absolutely for college. Um, it's a very similar curriculum um, and they each have common assessments across the board including uh, DBQs which is uh, the foundational skills for any advanced placement course within the social studies. Grade 10, most successfully, uh, you must complete United States History 1, so the student must complete uh, US 1 their 10th grade year, and then on into junior year, uh, this is where it begins to, uh, you know, your student becomes, they have some choice. So they can take either US History 2 at a CP or honors level, or they may complete advanced placement US History. Uh, that is a 135 day course and um, the, your student would take the AP exam in May. A fourth high school uh, requirement, or excuse me, um, course is strongly recommended. It's not required for graduation for students entering the social sciences field, but we do offer AP European history to both grades 11 and 12. We offer AP US history, as I mentioned, for both grades 11 and 12. And then we also offer uh, AP psych. Um, and then civics and government is also an option. Okay, so again, with advanced placement, you have uh, AP US history for grades 11 and 12, AP European history for grades 11 and 12, and AP psychology for grades 11 and 12. 
Something Mr. Goldman, I don't know, um, came to my attention is that when we were looking at the pathways that you had projected earlier, one option that is available uh, for our juniors to complete during their third required history um, would be for them to complete AP U.S. History in place of U.S. History II. Uh, and really what that is, is it the AP curriculum for U.S. History it begins at pre-colonization all the way through modern day. So it's a really intense, incredibly rigorous course, but something that I strongly encourage all students to strive for. So again, history and social science electives, unfortunately for grade nine at this point, um, we're pretty limited. I do believe that this may change moving forward, uh, with especially in light of the new curriculum framework. But um, for next year, um, grade nine, you would not have the option as your schedule would be full completing mostly um, you know, your core courses. But beginning in grade 10, you have three elective offerings. You have current issues, intro to law, and human geography. I will tell you this, if you are interested in any or all of these, sign up soon, all right? Um, they fill up quickly. I have incredible difficulty um, scheduling. I have to be honest with you. We're a highly sought after department. We have many in-house specialists. Um, and it further shows into our grades 11 and 12 offerings. We offer nine courses, current issues, intro to law, human geography, civics and government, intro to sociology, economics, intro to psychology, America in the 1960s, and lastly, the United States Constitution, a critical analysis, debate, and oration. Uh, some are at CP level, others are at honors, but again, nine elective offerings is quite something for a school of this size. And Mr. Brannigan, if you could change it one more time. Thank you, yes. Uh, so Roe Kappa National Honor Society, I'd like to mention this at this point, rather than mention it your junior year. Uh, something to begin thinking about, that we do offer a National Honor Society for juniors and seniors, and it is in recognition of the academic excellence in the field of social sciences. Uh, we have a great working relationship with the Middleborough Historical Association. Um, we are able to, um, you know, we engage throughout the community. Um, we support and uh, celebrate an interest in the understanding of and appreciation, appreciation of, excuse me, and for the social sciences. So it's something to begin thinking about in your eighth grade year, not wait until ninth or tenth grade. Um, if you're in middle school now, and your passion is, you know, community service, if your passion is political science, um, history, economics. Uh, maybe you're thinking you may want to travel abroad at some point um, and pursue a career in you know, some sort of service component. Um, I highly encourage you to begin thinking about this right here and applying when you do come to the high school. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. Thank you, Mr. Osgood. And I want to introduce to you the department chair for mathematics, uh, Ms. Victoria Munz, to share a little bit about math. Thank you for coming to the program of studies night. And um, in math, our situation is a little bit different than the other uh, disciplines because our discipline is so unique with the amount of readiness that factors into um, uh, how well a student will do at a particular level. What we do in mathematics is we use a bunch of data points to identify a level that we believe that would be the best level that would offer support and challenge for the student. And so that being said, in the program of studies, your math course has been pre-selected for you for grade 9, 10, and 11. Incoming grade 12 students may select. Um, I just wanted to also say that if you would like to talk about that or, or advocate for a different level, that we are absolutely open to that as well, and we will completely honor the request of the parent and the student. Um, but we would like to look at our requirements for mathematics. So j not to uh, be redundant, but some of these things are important to keep in mind. The grade uh, nine, we're so proud of our Algebra One program at this school. We have a very uh, rigorous, a very complete, it's 135 days of 84 minute instructional blocks. By the time the student finishes Algebra One, they have a very solid foundation, whether CP or honors. Both are excellent classes. And uh, grade 10, most students um, will finish geometry. 
grade 11, most will take Algebra 2. We would recommend strongly a fourth year course, and the fourth year course can be any of those that are listed. We have statistics at three levels, CP, Honors, and AP. We have calculus at three levels, Honors, AB calculus, which is an AP class, and BC calculus. And we have a new course called Qu uh, Quantitative Reasoning. And the Massasoit uh, courses also can qualify as a fourth year math course. So just to reiterate that we have the, uh, the block schedule. And so in a typical 90 day course, students will complete a whole year of math somewhere else. And this is the chart, the course pathways that Mr. Branigan was talking about earlier. Um, this is a new chart for us. Uh, I've gone to some statewide conventions, and so what we want students to do is look at their end goal. And I know that most families right now uh, have incoming eighth graders, so you may not necessarily know your, your career pathway, but the typical um, majors and the typical careers are up at the top. And the most important thing is that as a 12th grade student, you take the course that's directly underneath that, um, that desired career uh, goal. So to reiterate, we have some um, phenomenal uh, math teachers and some tremendous math students, who, some of whom take three AP classes in math by the time they graduate. And these are our AP offerings, advanced placement. We do have some credit, uh, some electives, not as, definitely not as many as what were mentioned by Mr. Osgood. The Math Strategies is an elective that helps the students prepare for um, for MCAS. I had a, a, there's a student in my advisory, he's a current junior. He was enrolled in a Math Strategies class last year. And he said, after the MCAS, thank God for that Math Strategies class. And I said, well, tell me more about that. And he said, Everything that was in that class was on that test. Now, we don't teach to the test, we teach to the standards, but he felt that prepared. And so a lot of our students get in the advanced range from having had a little bit of extra reinforcement. So that is, um, that is a good course. We have SAT prep happening this year for the first time, and we invite students to use their PSAT scores to enroll in that. That would be for grade, um, 11 or 12 students, yes. And then the consumer economics is for grades 10, 11, and 12. And I guess before I turn it over to Mr. Uh, Sil Silvia, I did want to say that uh, there is also the, um, the Honor Society of Math, and that's closely connected to being part of the, the math team. So if you have an interest in math and you like to compete and you like to solve fun problems, that that's something that's open to ninth graders. 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Thank you so much, Vicki. One thing about that fourth year of math, I know that in some of our literature, it will say it's a three-year math requirement. It's important just to clarify that in the fourth year, in that senior year, we really push the seniors to take a math class. Because if your child is planning on going to a four-year institution, it is required that they show math in their senior year. So because of the work that is done with Vicki and the math teachers in particular, that almost every one of our students in grade 12 takes the math anyway. Um, but we really, we did not make the move to say it had to be a requirement, because we also know there are some students that have no intention of going into that route, so why pigeonhole them into that requirement? But it is something that we strongly encourage it. And as we move forward, as I know we have a lot of eighth grade families here, as you get into that senior year, it is just something that becomes part of that, that conversation. I'd like to introduce Mr. Sylvia to just give a little bit of the pathways and, and courses that you can take in physical education and wellness. Thanks, Mr. Brennan. Uh, Second mo uh, most popular course in the school, right behind lunch. Uh, a couple laughs there. Okay. All right. Um, so phys ed, it's popular because we have to take it for four years, uh, every year for four years. 
Uh, that's a requirement. So, uh, but we're changing it up a little bit. All right, it's not the same course every year now. Uh, we actually have a 9-10 course and an 11-12 course. So students choose from uh, a variety of different courses. We have elective-based physical education now. Um, so that means you're gonna actually have a choice of what phys ed class you wanna take. Uh, and this is something new, so it's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve for our guidance department and our school in general to make sure uh, that we can make it happen. Um, but they start off with some important health topics and fitness activities in the first two years, progress to more advanced concepts and experiential learning uh, and how to maintain a physically active lifestyle. And like I said, you have to, uh, the only requirements are you have to take PE for all four years, and then the new requirement is you must pass Fit for Life, uh, which is more of a health-based physical education by the end of, um, of grade 10. So we're really encouraging that Fit for Life course for ninth graders. I know there's a lot of uh, eighth graders in here, but we're really encouraging that Fit for Life course uh, for eighth graders. We, have, we just adopted a new curriculum, uh, uh, a new unit really about chemical health with a focus on vaping that we're pretty excited about to get some awareness out there to our students. So, so grade nine and 10, sorry, I'm kind of reading off the slide here, but uh, Fit for Life, these are the electives that you can take in ninth and 10th grade for physical education starting next year. Uh, Fit for Life, which we're encouraging in grade nine, it's a combination of fitness activities and health curriculum, so there'll be some time in a classroom setting and some time in the, in the gym. Uh, sports game and team activities, that's more of your traditional phys ed activities, uh, team activities and sports. Uh, and then an intro to strength and conditioning. Uh, this is part of the transition into our new facility that we have in a, a couple of years. Uh, we're going to have a, a state-of-the-art strength and conditioning facility um, that we want to take advantage of in phys ed. So we're going to have an intro to strength and conditioning class where ex we're exploring uh, safety in the weight room and also uh, just sport performance training in general. Uh, and then grade 11 and 12 electives, they kind of progress from the 9-10 to 11 and 12. Um, they kind of mirror each other. Lifetime physical activities is going to be focusing on maintaining a, health, uh, a healthy lifestyle. Some of those outdoor leisure type activities we want to start to incorporate. We might even get into some hiking and backpacking and cycling and things like that. Um, and then advanced level strength and conditioning. Uh, there is a prerequisite for that course and that has to be the intro to strength and conditioning or varsity athletics with the assumption that if you're competing in varsity athletics, you will have some exposure to uh, the new weight room that we'll have in place. And actually we have a lot of new equipment in the current weight room as well. Uh, and then project adventure, uh, that's gonna be incorporated again into the new building, but the focus is really gonna be around experiential learning and leadership activities through physical education. Mr. Wrench, thank you. And lastly, um, our science technology department introduced Mr. Wrench. <laughs> Going twice, apparently. All right, uh, so I am Mr. Wrench, the science department chair. Um, there are many, many different courses. Uh, again, most of you are eighth grade parents, so um, all of the f incoming freshmen will be taking biology, either at the CP or honors level. Uh, he, brought up the MCAS, it's a little tricky next year because they are transitioning. Um, because we're on the, the semester schedule, the first half, uh, if you take biology in the fall, you'll be taking a paper-based test in February. If you take it in the spring, you'll be taking a computer-based test in June. They are transitioning in June uh, to the new curriculum standards, uh, so it's a little wonky next year for the uh, for the incoming freshmen, um, but the typical uh, transition goes from biology to chemistry to uh, physics. But we have a multitude of options. Uh, sorry to burst your bubble there, Oscar, but we got way more. <laughs> uh, we offered um, many different courses, uh, many different core courses: anatomy and physiology. Uh, AP Environmental Science, AP Biology, AP Chemistry, AP Physics, uh, that can be taken as core courses as well. Uh, we have, again, a ton of electives, both in the life sciences, like uh, oceanography, uh, environmental science, uh, astronomy, you get into the, well, it crosses into the physical sciences. We also have uh, CAD, uh, 
tech system. So there's a ton of different courses you can take as electives as well. Um, and that's the science end of it. We also have uh, computer technology within our department as well. Uh, so there are all incoming freshmen will be taking uh, the computer programming and design essentials course. Uh, should we get the project lead the way that he was talking about, there is an alternative course uh, that would be taken as a freshman that could replace that. Um, should we get the grant, there's a, we find out in March if we're not uh, get that grant. We are pretty hopeful that we will get that. Um, there's also uh, some very popular uh, programs through computer technology and TV Pro. The TV Pro currently is by applicant, you actually have to apply to get in because all the TV production gear is in the middle school, as I'm sure you're aware of. Um, so they have to get, they have to drive over in a van to actually take that course in the, other, in the middle school. Um, but that's pretty popular, and if uh, you check out the Project Lead the Way video that's been posted on social media, things like that, that was actually produced by them. It was pretty well done. What they're doing is pretty amazing in that course. Uh, <clears throat> so, tons of different options there. Within the AP uh, courses, uh, there are some that are full year, so they will run every day um, for both semesters. So our AP Bio, AP Chem, and AP Physics are full year courses. Um, if you are thinking about getting into any of these fields, the life sciences, uh, health sciences, engineering, any of those. Um, these are some basic courses that you should be taking um, potentially for credit, but also just to give yourself a foundation um, forward. Uh, we also have two, three quarter year courses. So the first semester, it would uh, you'd be taking that class every day, and then the second semester, it would uh, be every other day. Uh, AP Computer Science Principles is actually a new course uh, that's uh, starting next year. It's the first year this course is run. Uh, we're pretty excited about that. It's mostly a programming uh, course using JavaScript, uh, but there are some other aspects in that course as well. And we also offer AP Environmental uh, Science as well. Um, these courses are currently offered, uh, the Computer Science Principles is offered to sophomores, the rest are uh, strictly right now for juniors and seniors. Last but not least, uh, the Project Lead the Way. We're very excited to have these programs here. Um, these are grant-funded programs. They've uh, provided us with some funds to get some equipment here that typically you only see in colleges. Uh, and if a student is interested in the health sciences or in engineering um, or hopefully computer science, uh, if those things are of interest and you think this is a direction you want to go in, these pathways will provide you with an unbelievable foundation moving forward. Uh, these are set up so that they are taking one course each year. Uh, so the, they're listed in order. So the Principles of Biomedical Science is their first course in the biomedical science field. Um, it's essentially one of the case study. I'm not, I don't want to get into all the specifics. If you really want to hear a little bit more about it, that video that's uh, been posted on social media explains a lot of that uh, pretty well. And I'll also be out there uh, available to talk more about them. But they are set so that you, they build upon each other and um, they're essentially the last course in all of these. Their senior year is essentially like a capstone course. They are amazing uh, opportunities for our students. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, just a nice thank you to all of our department leaders and our guidance counselors in our department. So thank you very much. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask all of you to make your way out to the lobby so you can kind of get yourselves stationed and set up. And I will see you in just a moment. And all of us will see you in just a moment. So one thing that if um, Mr. Renshaw mentioned about the, a, the Project Lead the Way computer science that we're finding out in March. So if that's something is for the eighth grade families that are here, if that's a program you're like, I really want to do that. Um, we 
basically prepare for that. So last year, when we did launch the biomedical science and engineering, we didn't find out about that until April. So we were kind of earmarking that we knew there was going to be changes that were coming. So the minute that we got the grant, we then kind of went back down to the middle school and said, all right, we have it, we're ready, who wants it? And then we were able to rearrange schedules to make sure we were able to get the students in. So um, you may be sitting here thinking, well, how do I sign up for that if it's not offered yet? Um, if it is something that you know that you really want, then when we, once we get the word that we have it, then we begin to kind of communicate that out and we're able to make that happen. So um, the other thing is, is that we start this process really early and there's a real mindfulness to doing this. Um, in the fall, beginning in September, we begin the process of redesigning the program of studies. It becomes the work of the fall. Right in January, we begin this process because the goal is that when we leave for summer vacation, that your child has their schedule in hand. It may not give them the block of the day, it may not give them the teacher who they have, because there's a lot of that that still flushes out over the summer, but they'll know exactly the courses they're scheduled for and what they're taking. And then when they get their final schedule in August, it will have their teachers, it will have the blocks, it will have all of that. So it's an important process for us, and that's why the more questions that you're asking, when they talked about what Mr. Goldman said, reach out to the middle school, you also reach out here too. Um, there are questions that you may have about a course. You can meet the department heads tonight. If you're driving home saying, I really want to learn more about that Project Lead the Way, or I really want to know a little bit about the history program because I love history and I want to know about that more, this is the opportunity to begin to ask you those questions because when we close the portal on February 1st, next Friday, the Aspen portal will close. It does not end the scheduling process. So you're going to be receiving um, samples and drafts of the schedule and really just a course outline of what it is that your child has signed up for. And then basically we go through the whole process to keep vetting it to make sure that it's right. So there's a real method to our madness of doing this early. So when we leave in the summer, when you get your, for all the eighth graders here, um, when you finish your eighth grade your celebrations in the very beginning of July, you'll receive your piece, first piece of mailing from me as your principal. And it is a welcome letter that will have your schedule for the high school when you come up and just some things about the high school as well. So um, one thing that's important to note is that over the next year, we're going through a pretty big transformation. So the program of studies that you're looking at is going to look very, very different because next year is our last full year in this building because we're transitioning to the new one. So with that being said, we've already begun the work of, well, what does teaching look like in the new school? What programs could we be offering in the new school that we can't do here? So we want to make sure that you are ready for that as well, that some of the programs you may see that you saw tonight may be programs that we're no longer going to run, and they may be very different experiences. There may be things that we're already starting to do, like the Project Lead the Way and some of the um, elective programs, they'll be easily transferable into the new school. So um, next year's program of studies may look very, very different in some degree, because we have to begin living in the new school as we go into the sophomore year for all the eighth graders that are here as well. So here's what the rest of the night's going to look like for you if you'd like to engage. When you head out into the lobby, there are tables set up and all of the department chairs are there. And if there's questions you want to ask, if you want to learn more about the certain programs or certain courses, ask a question of Mrs. Miles and say, you know what, I saw that my child was signed up for X. Can you give me a sense of why that is and have that conversation? So all the department chairs are here to answer any questions to engage in conversation. The guidance staff is here as well. There'll be one guidance counselor that will be stationed at a guidance table to ask just general questions. At the computer lab, if you come out the lobby and just follow right along the side of the auditorium, in room 223 is one of our computer labs that we will have set up in there, that you could actually go in if you haven't started scheduling yet, you can go in and begin to do that tonight if you would like to do with support of the guidance department to help navigate that. And we also have the district technology department here as well that can help with Aspen. So if you're like, I'm locked out of Aspen, I have no idea what the heck my password is, um, they can get you into Aspen tonight. So that way you can begin the process here or begin that at home. And when you feel it's appropriate, you can um, head off with your evening. And this is now just really a flexible time for you. But I will tell you that our, our charge and my charge of the staff and of the guidance department and of our department leaders is to make sure that there's no questions that are left unanswered. So if you have a question, you can email me and I'll look at all the eighth graders here. I can't tell you, and I, this is something I, I have never seen before in a class, so this is a, a shout out to your grade. I can't tell you how many emails I have received from eighth graders asking questions, which I think that's awesome. 
So if you are driving home and you're like, I have a question about the high school, I want to know a little bit more about this, I want you to email me because you will get a response from me. Um, and I know that some of you have even asked to have an appointment, which I would say, come on in. And um, I had a parent who came in with their student and they had a whole list of questions about where they wanted to go. And I think that's incredible conversation. You own your journey at the high school. Um, and the last thing I'll say to you is this, and then I'll meet you out in the lobby. Um, you start to tell a story in the ninth grade. So your journey really starts the day you walk into the high school. Because the story that you're going to tell is a story on a piece of paper that gets sent off to every college and university that you're applying to. So we always say to our ninth graders and to all of our students the fact that the journey that you're on is a story that you're going to tell. So the courses that you want to be taking, you want to take an academic risk, but you also want to be mindful about how much of a risk do you take. And can you build upon that? You want to take a risk of maybe taking a course you never thought in your life you'd ever do before, because that's all part of high school, is exploring that. So we're here for answer questions, and um, we're so thankful that you um, are here tonight. Um, we're out in the lobby. I'll be out there as well to answer any questions or to engage in deeper conversation. And thanks for coming tonight. So um, for the eighth graders that are here, um, happy scheduling, and, um, and we'll see you very soon. So enjoy your outback day. Thank you. And everyone's out in the lobby, and as I said, engage in conversation if you would like, and meet, and, and so on.